it is a fear that cannot empower you or give you the perception that you need to comprehend what is occurring within your world. If you can become informed, then fear is transformed into concern, and concern is transformed into constructive action. We know of no other way to describe this. The interbreeding program is becoming very successful. Already there are those walking your earth who are born of the visitor's consciousness and collective endeavor. They cannot reside here for long periods of time, but within only a few years, they will be able to dwell upon the surface of your world permanently. Such will be the perfection of their genetic engineering, that they will seem only slightly different from you, more in their manner, and in their presence than in their physical appearance, to such a point, that they will likely go unnoticed and unrecognized. However, they will have greater mental faculties, and this will give them an advantage, that you could not match, unless you were trained in the ways of insight. Such is the greater reality into which humanity is emerging a universe filled with wonders and horrors, a universe of influence, a universe of competition, yet also a universe filled with grace, much like your own world but infinitely greater. The heaven that you seek is not here. However, the forces that you must contend with are. This is the greatest threshold that your race will ever face. Each of us in our group has faced this in our own respective worlds, and there has been a great deal of failure with only some success. Races of beings who can maintain their freedom and insulation must become strong and united and will likely withdraw from greater community interactions to a very great degree in order to protect that freedom. If you think of these things, perhaps you will see corollaries in your own world. The Unseen Ones have told us a great deal regarding your spiritual development and its great promise, but they have also counseled us that your spiritual predispositions and ideals are being greatly manipulated at this time. There are entire teachings being introduced into the world now that each human acquiescence, and the suspension of critical abilities and value, only that which is pleasurable and comfortable. These teachings are given to disable people's ability to access knowledge within themselves until people reach a point where they feel they are completely dependent upon greater forces that they cannot identify. At that point, they will follow whatever is given them to do, and even if they sense something is wrong, they will no longer have the power to resist. Humanity has lived in isolation for a long time. Perhaps it is believed that such an intervention cannot possibly take place, and that each person has proprietary rights over his or her own consciousness and mind. But these are only assumptions. Yet we have been told that the wise in your world have learned to overcome these assumptions and have gained the strength to establish their own mental environment. We fear that our words may be too late and have too little impact, and that the one we chose to receive us has too little assistance and support to make this information available. He will encounter disbelief and ridicule, for he will not be believed, and what he will speak of will contradict what many assume to be true. Those who have fallen under alien persuasion, they in particular will oppose him, for they have no choice in the matter. Into this grave situation the creator of all life has sent a preparation, a teaching of spiritual ability and discernment, power, and accomplishment. We are students of such a teaching, as are many throughout the universe. This teaching is a form of divine intervention. It does not belong to any one world. It is not the property of any one race. It is not centered around any hero or heroine, any one individual. Such a preparation is now available. It will be needed. From our perspective, it is the only thing currently that can give humanity an opportunity to become wise and discerning regarding your new life in the greater community. As has occurred in your world in your own history, the first to reach the new lands are the explorers and the conquerors. They do not come for all truistic reasons. They come seeking power, resources, and dominion. This is the nature of life. If humanity were well versed in greater community affairs, you would resist any visitation to your world unless a mutual agreement had been established previously. You would know enough not to allow your world to be so vulnerable. At this time, there is more than one collective competing for advantage here. That places humanity in the middle of a very unusual and yet enlightening set of circumstances. That is why the messages of the visitors will often seem inconsistent. There has been conflict amongst them, yet they will negotiate with each other should mutual benefit be recognized. However, they are still in competition. To them, this is the frontier. To them, you are only valued as being useful. If you are no longer recognized as being useful, 
you will simply be discarded. Here there is a great challenge for the people of your world, and particularly for those who are in positions of power and responsibility, to recognize the difference between a spiritual presence and a visitation from the greater community. Yet how can you have the framework to make this distinction? Where can you learn such things? Who in your world is in the position to teach about the reality of the greater community? Only a teaching from beyond the world can prepare you for life beyond the world, and life beyond the world is now in your world, seeking to establish itself here, seeking to extend its influence, seeking to win the minds and hearts and souls of people everywhere. It is so simple, and yet so devastating. Therefore, our task in these messages is to bring a great warning, but the warning is not enough. There must be a recognition amongst your people, at least amongst enough people here, there must be an understanding of the reality that you are now facing. This is the greatest event in human history, the greatest threat to human freedom, and the greatest opportunity for human unity and cooperation. We recognize these great advantages and possibilities, but with each passing day their promise fades as more and more people are captured, and their awareness is recultivated and reconstituted, as more and more people learn of the spiritual teachings that are being promoted by the visitors, and as more and more people become more acquiescent and less able to discern. We have come at the request of the Unseen Ones to serve in this capacity as observers, should we be successful, we will remain in the proximity of your world only long enough to continue to give you this information. Beyond that, we will return to our own homes. Should we fail, and should the tide turn against humanity, and should the great darkness come over the world, the darkness of domination, then we will have to depart, our mission unfulfilled. Either way, we cannot stay with you, though should you show promise we shall stay until you are safeguarded, until you can provide for yourselves. Included in this is the requirement that you be self-sufficient. Should you become reliant upon trade with other races, this creates a very great risk of manipulation from beyond, for humanity is not yet strong enough to resist the power in the mental environment that can be exerted here and is being exerted here now. The visitors will try and create the impression that they are the allies of humanity. They will say they are here to save humanity from itself, that only they can offer the great hope that humanity cannot provide for itself, that only they can establish true order and harmony in the world. But this order and this harmony will be theirs, not yours. And the freedom that they promise will not be yours to enjoy. Fourth Briefing Manipulation of Religious Traditions and Beliefs In order to understand the visitors' activities in the world today, we must present more information regarding their influence on world religious institutions and values and on the fundamental spiritual impulses which are common to your nature, and which, in many ways, are common to intelligent life in many parts of the greater community. We should begin by saying that the activities that the visitors are conducting in the world at this time have been carried on many times before in many different places with many different cultures in the greater community. Your visitors are not the originators of these activities, but merely use them at their own discretion to the extent that they are aware of them, and have used them before. It is important for you to understand that skills in influence and manipulation have been developed to a very high degree of functionality in the greater community. As races become more adept, and more capable technologically, they exert more subtle, and more pervasive kinds of influence upon one another. Human beings have only evolved far to compete with each other, so you do not yet have this adaptive advantage, 